Hello, and as you can see, it's quite dark here at the moment. Um, that's going to be the idea of this uh, this video, actually. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drive around the major roads in Canterbury and just film it. Uh, I've got a little um, mobile phone holder on my, on my windscreen, so I'm going to switch it around so you'll get a, a driver's view of the roads of Canterbury at night time. There should be enough light uh, on the major roads of Canterbury. There's plenty of street lights, uh, plenty of cars, so I think it should work. Uh, if it doesn't, it's never mind. I've got I've got an hour to kill while my daughter's at her, at her ballet class, so I might as well do something productive. So what I'm planning to do is having this camera that I'm using right now as my main uh, camera that will hopefully get enough footage going out of the window screen. And I also have my old Galaxy S4 that I use for my drone. I'm hoping to use this as a second camera and have it facing me, uh, but I think it's going to be too dark inside the car. I don't really want to have my light on. But I will see how it goes. Again, got nothing to lose. So this cam, this camera doesn't do anything anyway. It's not a phone. It's got no SIM card in it, so it will just record hopefully. Right. So I'm currently in Sainsbury's car park. So I will literally just stop this monologue now. Set up the cameras and drive out of Sainsbury's and take you around the major uh, roads of Canterbury. Okay, we are now pulling out of Sainsbury's car park. I think there's enough light to be able to use the dash camera. And I'm gonna go right out of Sainsbury's on the Kingsmead Road. The rain stopped now, so uh, there won't be no water drops on the windscreen, so that's better. The left-hand side now, these are all now derelict offices. This used to be the home of Serco, and they're all now being demolished, I think, at some stage. Ready for a new development going in. It's going to take a while. They've been derelict or empty for quite a while. It's the old Cold Harbour flats. I'm going to go all the way around the roundabout so I can show you the health centre. This roundabout's a nightmare. No one indicates around this roundabout half the time. Not that one there. <sighs> Jesus Christ. It's not difficult, is it really? It's just to indicate, what to say, I'm going around the roundabout. And he's going a bit too fast. Jesus Christ. Anyway, all the way around the roundabout. Ba -ba -ba -ba. towards mil Military Road now. More roundabouts. You'll notice quite a few roundabouts in Canterbury and it's a bane of some most people's lives in Canterbury because most mornings and most rush hours in the evening someone's always going to block the roundabout at some stage. Once someone blocks the roundabout in Canterbury all the roads get clogged up very, very quickly. It just takes one person to block the roundabout, any of these roundabouts along the, uh, sort of the Canterbury Ringway, and uh, everyone's at a standstill for a while. The old ambulance station on the, on the left just now houses. It's an ambulance station for many years, and my wife worked there for a while. And then uh, they decided to close it down, move all the ambulances about 20 miles away, and uh, build houses on the, uh, the old site. Coming up on the right hand side, you'll see the start of the old city wall. I'm not sure if you can see it actually from this angle. It's on the right hand side of the car park 
alongside it. I'm not quite sure if you can see it. I doubt if you can see it. I think it's probably too dark as well. Um, on the way back round, you'll probably be getting a better view of the, the seat wall. So we're coming up to another roundabout. And on the left-hand side of this roundabout, you'll see the, the cinema coming up now. It's a cinema. Oh, it's quite dark over there. Actually, it's normally lit up quite well, but... Drive this roundabout. <coughs> On the left here now, you'll see the corner house restaurant. It used to be the Flying Horse pub for many, many years. It's one of the oldest old coach houses, I believe. So back in the days of coach and horses, they used to be able to pull up into there and have a beer. The police station on the left. Another roundabout. And then you have more buildings on the left now, which are Christchurch University buildings. Uh, some people say they're a bit of an eyesore. And, mm, the Snooker Club on the left, and, and the big building on the left now, just coming up past it now, is a nightclub So I was to work in for two or three years. About uh, how long ago now? 15 years ago now. And the roundabout. Lots of roundabouts in Canterbury. So this roundabout is normally chock a block, actually. I think I've got here just after rush hour, so it's, it's not normally this clear. which way to go now. I uh, will go straight over, I think, and go down St. Peter's Street. Now down St Peter Street, St Peter Street, not St Pete Street, St Peter Street. Remember years ago on the left, round here somewhere, there used to be a tropical fish shop. You see, collect, used to be a go and buy new fish from. Uh, I think it's about here on the left now. I think. What's that? Like, disappeared probably about 20 years ago. Straight ahead, there you have. Barrett's, which is a car showroom at the moment, occupied by Jaguar. And you should now just about see the Westgate Towers going past on your right. One of our historic, one of many historic buildings of Canterbury. And now we're going to go straight up to Dunstan Street. Don't know why I've gone this way, it's a rubbish way. Uh, never mind. Dunstan Street. I've seen quite a lot of changes actually since I've been in Canterbury. On the right hand side you'll see the uh, and uh, it's newish Sainsbury's local. Now for many years that was a petrol station. So you use that quite a lot. But actually to be honest, apart from that, not much has changed here to be honest, apart from the Sainsbury's. You've got a Sainsbury's shop and then there's some student housing just above it. And a great fish and chip shop just Oh no. My nightmare this is getting stopped here at the train track crossing at St Dunstan's is an absolute nightmare. I really didn't want this because sometimes you're stuck here for about 10 15 minutes. It's as though they put these epoxy barriers down, and the train's about 
just about leaving Maidstone or something. It's a nightmare here. And you'll, the train will come past, and there'll be about one person on it. So I think I'll just pause the camera now for, uh, for about half an hour. I'll wait for the train to go past. Well, I've already been here eight minutes. Still no sign of a train. And they wonder why Canterbury has traffic problems this time of night. I think the traffic's already starting to build up behind me. And this... I'll be, I'll be still here for another two or three minutes yet. But obviously the uh, safety's first though. Here it comes, there's a train. Uh, there's more people on it than usual. This is, must be all the London commuters coming home from London. So we're now about 45 minutes away from London now on one of these high speed trains. So that's uh, probably one of the reasons why property in Canterbury is just so expensive now. Um, now that we're 45 minutes away from London, you're getting quite a lot of people who would like to live in London, but obviously it's even more expensive in London. But coming down this way is a little bit cheaper. I mean, I don't live in Canterbury anymore. I couldn't afford it. Trying to buy a, a five bedroom house that I need in Canterbury would, would cost me nearly, oh, I'd say, about three quarters of a million pound, I presume. So we're off again. Uh, which way should I go? I think I'll go up London Road. It's probably going to be a bit dark up London Road. I think there should be enough cars up there now to give a little bit of light. can't see much on the right hand side so what I'm planning on doing is somehow turn around at some stage and do the exactly same exact same route so I can pick up everything I missed but in reverse this is London Road and I've walked this road many times on the way to school uh, and I'm going now Five years ago, I used to walk up this, this road, and then I used to drive up this road quite a lot when I used to live in Canterbury, taking the kids to school. And again, it's always chuck a block on this road as well. It's always queuing up here. I don't think I've ever been up this road in the morning without queuing. Even in the old days when I used to get a lift to school, it's always be queuing here because the roundabout we're coming up to now. If you turn right, is the main road to London out of Canterbury. So if you want to go to London out of Canterbury, you'll go right here. But if you want to go coastbound or go towards city centre, you'll go left. And I'm going to go left. Now back towards the city centre now, so I'll just get everything that I missed on the right hand side. It's 40 miles an hour along this little bit here. Because when you come, if you come from London or, or the London side of Canterbury, you've been doing 70 miles an hour all the way from London for about nearly an hour, and then all of a sudden you, you hit that last roundabout and you get to this little stretch of road, you've got to remember you drop down to 40. Usually, well, this is a, a favourite hangout for uh, the mobile speed cameras. Just ahead of us now, I'm not sure if you can quite see, but there's another roundabout. <laughs> and behind that roundabout, you'll just about make out some flats or some apartment buildings. Um, that used to be the tannery. It used to be an old slaughter place where all the uh, cattle was, was it, were skinned. And they used to make the leather there. And it always used to stink really bad. So any visitors to Canterbury coming from the London side <laughs> the first thing they'll do is see the cathedral and go oh look at that lovely cathedral then the next thing they'll say is oh what's that smell 
it was really bad. So the first experience of Canterbury was, oh, what a lovely cathedral, then, oh my God, it stinks. So yeah, this roundabout used to absolutely hum. But now it's obviously gone and now it's been replaced by uh, houses. I never houses in Canterbury. Any, any small bit of land they find in Canterbury, whoosh, up goes a house. Normally, <laughs> normally a whoosh goes a house, followed by, oh, let's move some students into it. <laughs> oh dear. So that's one of the main things in Canterbury, there's quite a few students. I don't mind the students, happy days. Students are absolutely fine. It's unfortunately, housing issues in Canterbury is, because there's so many students, so obviously they need someone to live. The landlords buy up the houses and the easy money is to stick students in them. So when there's the University of ugh, so when there's the University of Kent and the Christchurch University, so there are hundreds if not thousands of students in the Canterbury area now. And they all need someone to live. I mean on the right on the right hand side now actually that, that that's a big student complex that's for the students that was one of those places that's uh, built for students and coming up again on the right hand side a big building there now again that's student accommodation and on the left sorry you can see the old city wall now on the left hand side obviously one of our historic landmarks it runs around half of Canterbury and there's all these different types of gates that I used to have to let you in many years ago obviously not my lifetime but medieval times so it runs all the way along the left here I'm hoping you see it you should be able to see it unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show you any parts of the cathedral in this tour because uh, it is hidden in the high street, it's hidden in the centre of the high street. You can be able to see it by car. Um, well, can you? I don't think you can. I lived in Canterbury for nearly 40 years. Um, only, I recently moved out about two years ago to the village of Elsham, which is about eight miles away and it's been uh, one of the best things I've done get, getting out of there getting out of Can well not getting out of Canterbury but just not having to put up with all the traffic it's been an absolute nightmare uh, now when I just did school run in the morning it just takes me 10 minutes rather than 45 minutes and it's a longer journey oh, it's, a, it's a further distance but doing the school runs in Canterbury absolute nightmare. I used to live the other side of Canterbury as well so I'd have to travel from one side of Canterbury to another. A distance of probably two miles still took still took 45 minutes. Uh, right, so I think we're about to go because that's probably the easiest part of Canterbury to drive around with the lights um, where else we go? there's no point going towards the town centre because it would be too dark and there's not a lot of room to manoeuvre really either I mean you can barely see me in, inside the car as it is so it's probably a way to time filming for my face I'm hoping to get some light of it on it somewhere. So far I've got nearly 20 minutes of footage. I'm wondering how much is actually usable. Pizza on the right hand side. Um, 
unfortunately I'm starving, so I don't really want to look at that. Oh, I did it. Oh, there I am, look, and see me, look, oh, look, there I am. 23% power left on that camera. So, should have a little bit of footage of me, of my face. Left there, there's, oh, it's gone. There used to be a dairy there, that's gone as well, so, dairy is all, is all shut, so I presume there's going to be more houses going on there. I'm not bitter about the houses at all, if not, serious, I'm not. I know people that live somewhere and understand the housing crisis and it's just amazing how as soon as any bit of land comes available in Canterbury it's just suddenly it's houses. Uh, and obviously there's always rumours about the hospital in Canterbury, whether it's going to be shut down, whether it's going to be remain open, whether they're going to extend it, whether they're going to close half of it down, whether it's going to be a super hospital. Every, so it seems like every couple of months something else changes and now I've just gone the wrong way now I'm going back to Sainsbury's I don't want to go back to Sainsbury's I want to go Sturry Road that's going to be my next road I want to go around all the way around this round so you can all notice as I'm indicating thank you all Doo -doo -doo. and I've slid all the way across my dashboard Right, now I'm turning left onto Sturry Road. This is another road that's normally chock a block with traffic at rush hour, but this time of night we should be absolutely fine. Hoping it should be light enough to be able to see. But this road is the road to Asda. The road to Asda, and also it gets busy along here as well because it's the main road out of Canterbury if you're going coastbound. There is another route out of Canterbury, but this seems to be the main route if you're going towards the coast, towards Margate, Roundsgate, Herne Bay area, Whitstable. So, you're, so you know, if you're getting out of Canterbury, this is, this is the road. Normally, you'll pass a few ambulances on the way as well on this road because obviously, if they're if they've uh, got a patient that they need to get to hospital, and instead of going the five minutes to her, to Canterbury at this time of night. They'll have to take the half hour journey to uh, Margate. Um, so, yeah, so not bitter at all about that either, but just point that out. Left-hand side, there's more. Well, it's basically like a student village down, down there on the left. Used to be an old scouts hut down there. Just kind of scouts there for a little bit. And there it's houses. Territorial, oh my God, Territorial Army headquarters on the right, just gone past that, and on the left now you'll see coming up very soon as the oh and Greg's over there on the right hand side. Greg's, I haven't, I've never been in a Greg's. I know people take the Mickey out of it because it's, <laughs> it's always it sort of gets associated with fat people, but I've never been in there. So you've got Asda now on the left hand side. You can't actually see it, I think. You can see the petrol station. There's the petrol station. So yeah, so as I said earlier, this is the main route out of Canterbury if you're going coastbound. So it gets a bit busy down here. And it also gets busy down here because this is where McDonald's is and KFC. And as I'm aware in the news today, I think KFC is going to be shut today because apparently they've run out of chicken. 
KFC have run out of chicken, everybody. Well, yo, run out of chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken have run out of chicken. Down here, uh, come on, mate. There you come, come, on, dudes. Go, uh, yeah. There's a little uh, uh, what are they called industrial state down here. You got obviously, you've got, you got McDonald's, KFC, uh, Maplins, uh, Matalan, uh, wow, well, Sports Direct, Sports Direct, one of my favorite shops, sportsdirect.com. Uh, there's Curry's and PC World. And a massive, is it the range they call it? Yeah, the range, that's a big old range. So you'll see the range coming up. Curry's and PC World. And also there's loads of car showrooms down here as well. So if you want to buy a car in Canterbury, it'll come down this way because there's all sorts of car showrooms down here. Also, you've got Parker Still. They've been here for donkey's years. They've been here for, as long as I can remember. They're still going. So we've got Fiat over there. Jeep. Kia. Some strange one I can't pronounce. I don't even know where they're from. There we go. Over a bridge now, which goes over the River Stour. Remember years ago, this used to be here. This used to be here. This used to be a single carriage to get over the bridge here. God knows how they managed. I can't imagine that being a single carriage way right now. Not sure if, uh, if anyone's watching from Canterbury, if they actually remember it being a single carriage over the single carriage bridge over the, over there. Imagine it being like that now. Jesus Christ. So much things change. Right, also you got Toyota. Uh, it's gonna get dark on here. Just, just on the right hand side you've got a train track literally along the side of the um, side of the road. And believe it or not, on the left there's an entrance to a wildlife uh, reserve. So hidden behind all these sort of showrooms and things is actually a nature reserve that every school child in Canterbury would have been to. Everyone everyone has been to the nature reserve in Canterbury. It's like one of the field trips that everyone does during their primary school life of Canterbury. You'll go in there, you'll be, <laughs> you'll be given a, uh, it's not a fishing rod, what is it? It's a, a net on the end of a stick and you'll dunk it into the, their, their pond that they have. It's not a pond, it's, well, it's a big pond. Uh, that's you know, full of little fish and newts and tadpoles normally at that time of year. And uh, yeah, you'll, then you'll take it all back to their classroom and you'll stick stuff under a microscope. And I, I actually remember on one of my trips there, some, uh, well, it wasn't in the pond, but it's, some girl found a dead wasp on the floor, so she picked it up and put it in a collection. And it works out apparently this wasp that she found was part of an endangered species of wasp. That people thought there's people thought there's only about ten thousand left of them, and she found one dead in the floor. So another one. So that's nine thousand ninety nine left. Right, I think I'm going to head back to Sainsbury's now because that's about all I can do really in Canterbury this time of night. Because every, everywhere else is a bit too dark really. So but I think I've been able to get round and shown as much as I can of Canterbury at night with enough light to be able to see anything. Oh my god, away. I'm hoping this video is A, watchable, B, you can actually hear what I'm saying. C, I'm hoping to get at least 10 minutes out of the 22 minutes I just recorded. Soon find out, I want to get it home. I don't think you'll see much of my face on this small camera. It's 
too bloody dark in the car. I might even go, in, I might even go into Sainsbury's and get something to eat in the morning. But if I do that, then I'll probably ruin my dinner. I mean, someone get home, hopefully the wife took my dinner for me. I'm starving.